Just have at it. Whatever you guys want to know, let's go. Is there a, a, a different approach or a different kind of mindset going into a tournament like the NIT that's that's one and done, or do you just treat it as you know another another game, another opportunity? Well, I think you know, number one, we want to win it. Um, you know, we've been very honest with our guys about that. That our goal is to win the whole event. <laughs> Uh, but like any, and I can't imagine going into any tournament and not feeling that way, so that's not anything new or different. But like any event, uh, you, can't, you can't get any closer to winning it if you don't take care of the first game. That, and so you do got to look at it one game at a time. We have an unbelievable amount of respect for anybody that's still playing at this point. That, that's something we talked about as a team on Sunday. If, if you're still playing at this point in the year, you're good. That's just what it is. Uh, and so we have a re healthy respect for everybody that's still in the postseason. Most people are done. Um, and then obviously a, a really healthy level of respect for uh, San Francisco. And just not, not being as familiar just because they're in the West Coast Conference, not having a, the chance to watch them play a ton this year. I've seen them against Gonzaga uh, on TV late one night. But uh, getting into their scout here over the last – you know, a couple days, they're like a, all the teams that are left still playing. They're really, really good. You know, won a bunch of games, had a great conference season. And so as much as we do want to win the whole thing, we're not looking past the first game. We are trying to take it one game at a time. In this day and age of the transfer portal, a lot of coaches will say, you know what, we're going to deny this bid, attack the portal, try to get better for next year. You and Dan said Cincinnati plays March basketball after you lost to Baylor. What is it about this scenario this year or this season or kind of past experiences that makes you want to play in the NIT, continue playing instead of just hitting the portal? I love coaching. I, you know, I, uh, I love coaching. Um, and I, I love coaching these guys in this locker room. <clears throat> like, I can't imagine not having an opportunity to coach these guys and turning that down. I can't imagine having a chance to coach a game in Cincinnati and turning that down. Like I, I can't personally. I'm too passionate. I have too much love for what we do and who we do it with. I can't imagine not playing. Now, like our players and like our fans, I mean, I'm extremely disappointed we're not playing in the NCAA tournament. And down, I mean, I was really down about that. Uh, still disappointed about it. Uh, but I can put into perspective in a really quick period of time that as down as I am about that, I'm not going to miss an opportunity to do what I love to do. I mean, this is a blessing. This is a gift. Uh, I, I can't imagine having this opportunity to play for something that's a big deal. Like, it's not the NCAA tournament, but the NIT is a big deal. Having a chance to win a tournament and get a banner, get a ring, that's a big damn deal. And, ha and having a chance to do it here with these guys, I, I couldn't fathom not, not doing that my position that I'm in. Will you have a full complement of players? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, say, same thing. I, I think you look around the country, and there's a handful of people that opted out last year, a handful of people that opted out this year, and, you know, either you don't love coaching, you don't want to coach the players that you're currently coaching, or the players don't want to play. I mean, it's, it's got to be one of those three things. And I'm not pointing any fingers. I, I can't imagine it being anything that's not one of those three because the, the transfer portal is going to be open for a long time. There's still basketball going on. I, that's not – I think people can say that. That doesn't sound like a honest reason to me. Um, so we don't have any of that, you know. We love coaching. <laughs> we love coaching the players that we currently have, and our players want to play. Uh, there's a ton of disappointment we're not in the NCAA tournament, but – I think everybody in our program has put that into perspective quickly, and we're excited to take the floor. I'm sneaking another one in. Uh, uh, your net was 37. Uh, Coach Patino's was 32, and, and I think Indiana State 28. Uh, Coach Patino doesn't think much of the net these days. Uh, your thoughts on that? I'm not quite sure what the net means. I, I have no idea. I, I don't I have no idea. I, th those points I agree with. Like I, I have no idea what the net is in place for. Uh, I've thought about it in an even deeper way. 
if we're not going to utilize the net to select teams in the tournament, but then we are going to utilize quad one, quad two, quad three, quad four, which that's determined by the net, that just seems like wildly contradictory to me. So we take as serious as anything the quad one, two wins that are the quads are determined by net rankings and also where games are played, home, road, or neutral. But yet net rankings don't matter in a true form when you're selecting teams. I, that's where I get very confused. And I'm not sitting here politicking that we should do one or the other. I just, like anything, the clarity is always helpful to everybody. After a full season in the Big 12, you've spoken highly about the league all year. What's one thing that you didn't know going into the year that you do know now about the league? It's a great question. I mean, what what an unbelievable basketball league. I mean, it guys, it's unbelievable. Uh, it was fun, challenging, <laughs> awesome. I mean, it's awesome. If you're a competitor and you love college basketball, like I'm so pleased for our university and for our fans that we get to be in the best league in college basketball. It makes every night exciting. Um, I can tell you it's made me a lot better basketball coach, and it'll continue to. It's made our players better players. It's made our team a better team. It's making our program better. Like, it's awesome, but it is a challenge. Uh, learned a lot. Like, you know, a lot of the things you hear going into it, you know, you know are real, but when you experience them, it's much different. Uh, I think the biggest difference between our league and every other league is there is not one night off. I mean, it's 18 for 18 and it'll be 20 for 20 next year. And I, I, I just, I can't stress it. That sounds very simple and cliche, but like going through it every two or three days over the course of what, you know, nine, 10 weeks, that it really is something. And, and I mean that in an awesome way. And it, the neat thing is you, you have a chance, no matter what happens over a week period or two, you have a chance over the next week or two to, to do great things. Like you always can come back. And uh, and that that was really neat. You know, you go through a bad stretch, okay, that's going to happen. Everybody in our league went through some bad stretches. You can reverse it and go through a good stretch really quickly. And that that's really neat in itself. I, I do think in college basketball, we have these super leagues that are being created. You know, then um, the Big 12 is the super league of super leagues in basketball now. And it's only going to get more so when you add the four schools that are coming in next year. I do think we need to rethink how we structure se selection. You know, like there's no no way we have eight teams out of the Big 12. Like there's just no way. And I can imagine the Big East, there's nothing, three teams. I mean, there's just no way. And so if you're going to have these super leagues, then we need to come up with a different system for how we select for the NCAA tournament. Because you, you do feel like maybe it's not the best teams in the field all the way. And I, if I had all the solutions, I'd give them to you. I got enough things I'm trying to figure out coaching our program. But, you know, you feel like the, there's so many changes that are happening in college basketball. You'd like to see some adjustments based on the way leagues are structured now. I think it was Chip Kelly offered a solution in uh, football. Do you have a solution, you think? No, guys, I, I've been spending all my time and energy trying to get us ready to play games here for the last couple months. If, if, if somebody wants to, to hire me on the side and pay me handsomely, <laughs> to find a solution for the NCAA tournament selection process. I'm happy to come up with something and I'm sure I'm sure I'll do a nice job. But my, my, my job right now pertains to doing other things. This might be a better off season question, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. You, you mentioned 20 games next year uh, in conference. You have the Crosstown shootout. Uh, I believe there's still the, the Big East, Big 12 challenge that's a possibility. Um, when scheduling, when looking at scheduling in a 20 game situation in league, but the importance that the committee placed on non-conference. <laughs> it's it's basically they're telling you you have to play 26 high major games if you're gonna schedule difficult out of conference. What, what does an MTE look like next year if you've thought about that? What is scheduling? I mean, X is already there at Georgia Tech. You're going to Georgia Tech. I, again, I, I think it'll be something that, you know, uh, we still have games to play. Sure. So I don't want to get too, you know, <clears throat> to it down this path at the moment. But 
we always try to have great strategy when scheduling to give our, put ourselves in the best position. Um, and the, the, the frustration, I think, from all of us, I, I imagine a lot of guys in our profession is, it seems like every year, the explanation for why this team or that team didn't get into something different. So if it's this year, it's non-conference scheduling. It's like, well, if, if, if a Big 12 team plays 18, I'm just making this up, but like 18 quad one games or 15 quad one games, and a team in another league only played 10, but they scheduled harder in November, I, what's the, like, I don't, I don't understand the difference. But if that is true, then we'll schedule accordingly. I, I, until we can get some real clarity, and we will, I'll, I'm going to reach out to everybody. I like give everybody peace of mind here that I'll make sure that I reach out to people on the selection committee um, for guidance. We'll reach out to scheduling gurus. I'd like to think we're scheduling gurus. We spend a lot of time and energy on it. Uh, I'll reach out to the people at the Big 12, and we go to our league meetings. I'm sure they'll do a presentation on that, like they always do. I'll talk to other coaches. We'll, we'll try to figure that out. But where I laugh, it's like it's so inconsistent on what the reasons are. Again, clarity would be would be really helpful. And I think we gotta they gotta make some adjustments moving forward based on the the changes that have happened in college basketball. And I assume that'll happen. I just sooner sooner rather than later be helpful. Do, do they need to take some of the objectivity out of it because it, when they were talking to the selection chair Sunday it was like well this person has this opinion and this person has this opinion and they differ should there be one uniform like this is what we're looking at or, or is it just part of the process that there's going to be 10 people in that room and they're all going to have a different criteria which seems insane yeah I, 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 it'd be nice to have less objectivity and more clarity. Again, I I hate to be the guy that complains without solutions. That's something that we value so much on our staff. It's like, hey, everybody can, you know, I want people to point out what we're not doing well, but what's this, come in with a, a solution to the problem. So I don't ever want to be that guy that sits up there and does that. I got to be cautious because I, I don't have the solutions today, but I can tell you that I would love to have more clarity, and I think every coach would. I think when people know what it is going into it, you either meet the standard or you don't. And I think, listen, I, for us this year, we felt like we missed some big time opportunities to build a resume, to solidify ourselves as an NCAA tournament team. That we had leads in league games, late in games, four yeah. times, and and didn't close those games out. We got to look in the mirror. I'm not complaining about the selection process because we didn't get in. We had our chances. Um, I think we were really damn close, and that hurts, and that's frustrating and disappointing. Uh, but when you do look at the way certain people did or didn't get in, it, it is frustrating that just as somebody in this profession, and it would help to have clarity. Two more. You talked about the reasons for wanting to play in the NIT. Does it put you at a disadvantage in terms of the portal with it opening and you still having games to kind of focus on? And no. Yeah, like number one, we really like our players. So the, you know, again, I, and I'm not judging anybody, but if you don't like your players or your current players, or your players don't want to play, I can see okay, maybe we shouldn't play in this thing. Let's just go get a new roster. Or, like that's that's not our goal. Um, we like our players. Like we we love our players. We we think there's there's great foundation for next year's team sitting in the locker room right now. And so uh, I think we're not going to get behind. I mean, the most important recruiting we have is the guys in that locker room. So, what, like, no, we're not getting behind. And, and this, this portal, it's going to be wacky. It was, yesterday was the first day, and mm -hmm. it was what, how many, how many players went into it? 300. Like, well, today will probably be wacky. And then tomorrow, and it'll be wacky every single day until it closes. And then – that doesn't mean recruiting's over. That just means nobody else can go in. So it it's going to be a, a wild and crazy spring, and I don't think we get any disadvantage. I think it's an advantage to keep working with the guys that you believe in and you want to build around. Last one. 
West two-part question. First, what have you seen from San Francisco on tape? What are some of the challenges they present? And then how much of a benefit is it to potentially not have to go no further than two hours away from here to play all of your games? Man, San Francisco, they are so skilled. Uh, like offensively, that they, they can hurt you in a variety of ways. I don't want to pronounce their starting, and I wouldn't call him, he's like kind of a point forward. They're a big kid. If you guys want to pronounce it for me, I'll say it, but I don't want to mispronounce it out of, out of respect for him, but he's terrific. Um, you know, they have a big that they honestly use as a point forward. Like he brings the ball up the court. Uh, they set ball screens for him. He can make tons of great passes. He's athletic and can finish at the rim. So they do a ton of neat stuff offensively around him and play with a lot of freedom. And they have a ton of guys around him that are super skilled to shoot the ball and make plays off the bounce. Um, positionally, they're or defensively, they're really positionally sound. They're huge. I think people that come out on Wednesday night will be really surprised just how big they are, one through five. Like, their positional size is incredible, and they do a good job of being in good position defensively and making it hard to score over top of them. Uh, but again, I mean, let's look at their numbers this year. Look at their record in league in a really, really well-respected league that's got two teams advancing to the NCAA tournament uh, that are in the top 25. So, and they've been right there in some of those games. That very well coached, very skilled, great size. Uh, yeah, they'll, they'll be a, a challenge, like anybody will be this time of year. And then I haven't really looked that deeply through our path because I do I do take it one game at a time. Um, and the, the assistants on our staff are really good at looking at the next thing, so I don't have to and our players don't have to. Cool, thank you. And one more. I wasn't ready, David. I wanted to talk to these guys today. No. Uh, I, I, uh, I've heard that that some the, the the tickets are selling. I got news of that here this morning uh, for NIT tickets, and you know I told our players um, on Sunday because everybody's disappointed for sure. I told our players I said, hey, the NIT at Cincinnati isn't the goal, and our our fans expect us to be playing in the NCAA as they should, but our fans are the loyals as loyal as they come, and they will come out for us in the first round and be loud and crazy and all that kind of stuff. And I've I said that to our players with a lot of confidence. Uh, and it's neat to hear that there's a response. And I hope we see as many people out there as we can because that, that helps elevate our program. Like, we got a lot of passionate uh, fans that care a lot about this program. It makes this place different, not just to me, but to our players. And so when you guys come out and, 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 and show that you're different than other fan bases, that, that might not show up for an NIT game, not only does it really help us win a game, but it also helps us continue to, to build this program and recruit and retain and do all the things that we have to do to keep taking steps. Sorry. Thank you. Does, that wide, does the wide lane benefit you? <laughs> I don't know, Scott. The wide lane. I, yeah, the experimental rules. I, I've coached in more NITs than I'd like to say I have, to be honest. But uh, the, the – uh, the experiment, experimental rules in the IT, I, I've always liked that as, from a coaching perspective, uh, just to how you think about strategy and things like that. But I haven't thought that deeply about the, the wide lane yet. But that'll be interesting to see a different lane on the floor. Thanks. Thank you.